Hi, this is Beth Benzing. In the activity Sampling Sunflowers, students will learn how to select a stratified random sample. Students will also be able to explain how to choose a variable for stratification and why stratified random samples are sometimes better than a simple random sample. Read the following scenario, and the first step is to randomly select 10 squares from the 100 given. Students will do this one of two ways. First, they could assign 100 numbers to the, follow, to the squares and then randomly generate 10 numbers between 00 and 99 if using the, the random number table or 1 and 100 if using a random number generator. Or they could randomly select a column by assigning numbers from 1 to 10 and then randomly select a row and that would allow you to select a random square. You could repeat this then 10 times. Step 2 asks ask to sample 10 squares from a stratified random sample using the rows as strata. Use table D or technology to randomly select one square from each horizontal row. Record the location of the squares. To do this, we'll first assign each square in the row a number from 1 to 10. If using a random number table, let the tenth square represent number 0. As you can see, in line 100, the first random number is 1. So in row 1, we would select square, the very first square, which would be a 1. The second square selected would be the number 9, which would be the ninth square in row 2 in the second strata. So the ninth square would be I. So the second um, square in your sample would be I2. Method 3 asks for a stratified random sample using the columns as the strata. So as you can see, you're now going to need one square from each column. And again, you would use a random number table or a random number generator from 1 to 10 looking for one square within each column. In step 4, you will need the sampling sunflower table that gives the actual number of sunflowers in each square grid. The students will now create three comparative dot plots with their mean number of sunflowers from the three different sampling methods. So each student is going to have a sample mean using an SRS method from step, in, step 1 and a sample mean from using a stratified random sample with, with, um, with their strata being rows. And step three, they're going to have a sample mean of using a stratified random sample with their strata being columns. Here's an example of the three distributions. These distributions each have 100 sample means. I also want to mention, even with a small sample size, the similarities and differences can still be observed. When comparing the three dot plots, students will see that the spread is similar is smaller for the stratified random sample for the rows as the strata. This is because the squares within each row contain a similar number of healthy plants, but that there is a big difference between rows. When we choose strata that are similar within but different between, stratified random samples gives a more precise estimate than simple random samples of the same size. The other observation students will make is the center of each of the distributions are about the same, around 102.5. This makes sense because the random sample of means should center on the true mean population, which is 